if you'd tell me once more about the uh, about when you came down here and like you'd want to go out and see the barn and they wouldn't let you. There's a definite distinction between what men should do and what women should do. And I continually came into you're supposed to be with the wife in the kitchen or the house or whatever. No, you're not supposed to be out here. And it was very frustrating to me because I wanted to learn everything I could. And part of it was farm life because, I, you know, that wasn't part of my growing up and everything. And, um, well, just lots of times. You know, Bill can go in and chat to the people in the store, but a woman's not really supposed to. Um, if there's a woman there, it's okay. But, you know, the men... The men chat and talk around all the time, and the women don't. The women usually stay in the cars and wait until it's all over with. It's very frustrating to me because I like to be social when possible and just or, get out. Or the pool hall. There was one time at all, oh. they had a pool hall. And we were used to in college and stuff. We go in and shoot a little pool together and stuff, and that was a definite verboten type area. I think Betty went in there Ooh, once, once. With, you know, and the <laughs> vibes were so heavy that, you know, you're not supposed to be in this type of place. And, the gas station down Thomasville, Frank's used to be, you know, the old pot belly stove. And you'd sit around BS with the guys. And, of course, a woman would never, you know, go sit down in one of the chairs there or something and talk or whatever. But, uh, there's a definite, you know, distinctive line between the sexes down here. And, of course, coming in, you come in, you have a different idea of, uh, you know, it's a more equal relationship that develops and then you come in Betty was frustrated a lot I didn't mind it too much you know <laughs> right, I think you it's it. kind of neat because the man you know occupies a much more status orientation in the community around here or whatever and, you know I kind of got off that a little bit <laughs> Betty never did yeah. is it changing? Cha <laughs> <laughs> it's not changing is it <laughs> uh, we still have our own situation at home um, now that uh, I'm a teacher and I'm a part of community that way I'm more accepted and you know things go smoother in different places you know, I don't really feel the I don't put myself in situations that I used to you know let's put it that way you know I know where I should be and where I shouldn't be and I just don't go where I shouldn't be because it, it's too much hassle yeah and now with the kids and everything you know when we first came down it was just the two of us and we were used to doing everything together, and all of a sudden it was, Bill can do this and you can't, and that was what was so frustrating, yeah. Um, I still speak out occasionally, and some people <laughs> don't appreciate it, but that's just part of it. Yeah. Have you joined in any of the, whatever the women do around here? Well, what do women do around here? I'm not really quite sure. They take care of the families. Um, as far as, you know, being together or doing anything, they're really isn't much. You know, the women get together at parties, you know, kids functions and things like that. But there's still an awful lot of tie of kins. If you have kin in the area, then when it's time to do things, you go and do it with your family, you know. And otherwise, you're still outside of it. You occasionally get on it, but you're out. What about jobs for women? Well, there's the factory and there's teaching. And uh, possibly in some of the stores, but it's another thing with a lot of jobs. It's who you know, you know, who you're related to a lot is how jobs, you know, and you can understand it if someone in your family needs a job, that's who you'd give it to, you know, but that's the way it goes. And there really aren't very many jobs anyway. How can a young family, not retirees, but how can a young family come into this area and make a living? Uh, very poorly, especially if they try and come in by their land on time or something. If you can't come in with your land paid off so that you're not making payments, you can live on nothing or next to nothing. It's not enjoyable, but you can do it. But if you're coming into the area and have to make payments or stuff, and a lot of these kids do it now. You know, they come in, they put the down payment, and they figure, well, I'll work in the city and pay it off, and they get impatient and come down. And they find out that they have to leave to do it because the only industries are timber basically and if you have a education you can teach and stuff but if you come down here and don't know anything you don't go out and work in the timber you know it takes a certain amount of skill and learning and then you have to have the equipment and the tools for it the one thing about the area is if you it doesn't matter if you don't have much money you know if you don't if it doesn't matter if you're not dressed as well as other folks and things like that it really doesn't matter you know, to the other people. It's just a matter of what you want. You know, there's not the stigma about your kids have to be real well dressed and everything like it's that. It's the so. psychology of uh, poverty as far as if you went up in the city and tried to live the same lifestyle, you could do it for the same amount of money, but you would feel poor the whole time. You want to get that? <laughs> you can take a mark. I was just 
curious, when, when people move down here, you know, from the north, from the city, how do they think they're going to live? I mean, what kinds of... Well, people come down with a very naive attitude. We did the same thing ourselves. It's hard to uh, relate to it anymore after being down here so long. But they come down, you know, wanting to live the mellow life in the country is a very quotable phrase or whatever. You know, it's going to be a uh, communion with nature sort of thing. And everything will take care of itself. And uh, we're going to grow a garden, raise all our own food, and live and have a few animals. And we won't need any more or want any more. And so many of them come down here and they try and raise a garden. They don't know how to raise a garden and they don't get anything together and they haven't got any food. And then they try and go out and get a job and they can't get one. And uh, idealism brings, especially younger people, brings them in. And they can't uh, have a lot of trouble handling. It's just a, it's a very realistic area as so far as survival goes. You, know, you have to be able to play the game or orientate towards the area and stuff and you can't fight it. A lot of people try and fight it and bring in their organic gardening books and do it the way it says in there, which just doesn't work in this part of the country. Well, it does to a certain extent. Well, take fruit trees. You know, fruit yeah. trees, they say, okay, in this part, you dig a huge hole, fertilize this, that, the bigger, more room you have for the roots. If you go buy a, a gardening book on fruit trees, they die here all the time because there's clay soil. And you dig a big hole and it fills with water and kills the tree. So around here, you just dig a small hole and you stick it in and maybe a very little bit of fertilizer and it'll make it. But you can't follow these. No local people know this sort of thing, you know, but you don't when you come in. Or, or they'll say, well, don't do that. Dig a little hole, you know. And you'll say, well, geez, you don't know. You've just been back here a long time. This book here says dig the big one, you know. And uh, you have to realize that, you know, this situation exists where every part of the country has a different way of doing things. And the people who lived here know best way to do it in most cases. You talked about this one this one group or family or commune that came in and tried to do it without chainsaws and without can you tell us a little bit about that? That was a good story. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> we met at odds with them, yeah, yeah, originally because they thought, Ah, what are these people you know, here we are with the chainsaws and everything else and then they were totally against using any power at all. Well after a while they did change for a while. The first thing they go, we were on pretty good terms with them, sort of, because they bought one of our goats. We had milk goats. And when we first came, we tried everything, and milk goats was one of them, and they got that. But they did change. Yeah, they, they had a lot of idealism. And, you know, some people, though, aren't they? They'll get away with that. They'll do it. And they'll live that simply. I guess they can, psychologically, they can do it, and they actually want to do it. But, you know, so many people come down with those ideas of being in harmony with nature. <coughs> And it doesn't really work in a lot of cases. If if you aspire to anything or want to be challenged intellectually or physically or anything, I mean, they were going out and trying to get their firewood by picking up branches. And if you want to heat a house down here, it takes a hell of a lot more than branches to be able to do it. It depends how comfortable you want to be. And we've decided that we just assume be comfortable. And so, you know, we do things the way that make, you know, it's comfortable. Uh, like, we just finally got a dryer. I fought it for a long time. I didn't want to use the energy or the power. And But when you're teaching full-time and it rains and everything else, it's quite difficult taking care of all the clothes and everything else without appliances like that. Now that I got it, it's fantastic. But I fought it for a long time. I, just, I didn't want to go that much, you know. So I consider it luxury. You know, a lot of people, you know, a dryer isn't luxury, but to me it is, you know. There's lots of ways like that that we've changed, you know, after we've been here a while. Decided we wanted to do things more comfortable and the easier way. There's less, there's less friction and it's easier to get along with the family and everything else when you can do things an easier way and then you have more time for each other, you know. When you're doing things the hard way, sometimes that's where all your energy goes and then getting along with everybody is more difficult. Yeah. Those, those people that stay for you know, a couple of years and get past the point of the idealism and actually want to settle in this area, find, I think, that they have to work full time. And it's usually the man and the wife both. But you have to be put in 10 or 12 hours a day to scrape together some sort of living or to get anything done. And uh, you just don't have a lot of time. Uh, you know, I don't know when the last time I was in the woods or down at the creek or anything like that. Or, you know, I take one canoe trip a year or something, even though I live right in the area. You just don't get around to it. The, the play toys and the games that you'd play if you visited or stuff and you'd enjoy nature once you're living down here, you don't. It, 
even with trees, as far, you know, I used to come down and look at a tree and say, hey, that's a nice tree. I look at a tree and say, hey, that's a red oak. That'll split good, you know. I think in terms of what I can do with that tree and not how I can enjoy it and uh, the same things with everything else. Your, your viewpoint, well, you get saturated. You get used to having a lot of timber. You're, you lose that uh, desire, whatever it is, to perpetuate it or keep it. You know, you realize to live that you have to use a certain amount of your resources and things. The only thing is I can't imagine anymore living in a total city situation without the trees and without the quiet. You know, we think of occasionally, you know, of not being here for a while. But I'm gone for a while and I'm glad to get back to the quiet. And everything. You, know, you, can't, you can't find it in other places. You, know. you, you take one or the other. You either have the culture and that sort of thing or you have the quiet and the peace that you get, you know, from being able to live in the woods. You've been here a little while. Do you have any feelings about what what the future of this area is, what's going to happen to it? I used to think it developed a lot quicker than it would. The Park Service came in. They put in $2 million down in that park at Alley Springs. And, uh, <laughs>